Hey everyone, it's Audrey Berm from Audrey Lynn Studios on the west side of Canada near Vancouver. Um, today I have mm, kind of a little make along, glaze along for you. I had one of my subscribers, Diana, ask if I would show how I do my cookie cutter ornaments and um, how I cut them and paint them. So that's what this one's about. So this, the, what we're doing today will be the candy house. And I also do them in the green color. But today we'll be doing the, the blue one. So, um, yeah, all right, well, let's go. Okay, so here I have a piece of three, Plainsman 340 clay and um, I had rolled it out to quarter inch and compressed it with um, the rib and then flipped it and compressed it again. And this looks like this because I was cutting out snowflakes already on the outside of it. So I thought um, this would be a good time to just quickly film how I do my ornaments. Um, so I take cling wrap over there and lay it on top of the clay and then grab my cookie cutter. So this time I'm using the um, candy house cookie cutter that I bought off of an Etsy seller and press in. Now this is quite stiff because I, my snowflakes, I have to have a stiffer clay for them just otherwise they just mush everywhere. So, but um, normally I don't for this. Okay. And then I take that off. This looked a lot better with stiffer clay. Maybe I should do that all the time. Okay, so there's the candy house. And then I use my foam wire and just kind of hold my house to find where I need to put my wire. So if I put my wire here, oh dear, I don't know if you can see because my light is awful here. Oh, just a minute. Okay, so if I put my wire here, then my house is going to sit like that on the tree. I want my house to sit like that. So I know that my wire has to go right, right there. So it'll be on, a, on the angle part of the roof. There we go. Okay, and I have these boards. I don't even know why I have them, where I got them from. They are one-sided uh, paper, I guess, is on this side, but they're, they're quite thick. And I put newspaper down on them and lay my ornaments on there. And then I'll put more paper on top of that and when I've got this full, lay another board on top and put weights on here. And my weights are generally socks with rice in them. All right, so here I have the candy house and it is bone dry right now. And uh, can you tell anything about that? I don't think so. So I will use my stroke and coats for this and I have all of them labeled in little bottles like this. And I will leave links for the bottles, which come like this. And they come with a bunch of tips, but I get a different set of bottles for the tips because this set um, only has one that is big enough, uh, a big enough, I guess, gauge or whatever for the paint to really come through nicely. And the other set has a few more. So anyway, so I'm going to start with old lace 
and that's stroke and coat old lace and I don't have enough in this bottle right now so just a second because I picked a new bottle all right so just refill that Oh, for goodness sake, I guess I should have been prepared, eh? <laughs> Here we go. Ah, there's plenty in there. Oh. Okay, I'm going to pause you. This is such a time waster. All right, it was a little thick, so I just added some water and uh, thinned it down a bit. So uh, the bottles come with these little caps, which is awesome. So I rarely have my stroke and coats drying in the nozzle, which is a beautiful thing. If you do, you can just stick your pin tool down there. All right, and one of the, so I'm not sure if you can see that. So this is my little, water nozzle thingy <laughs> and um for big areas i use this i don't know this green one and it's it's quite large anyway so just kind of twist that on there and it it stays on really nice and then i generally i'll do this here because i'm going to uh zoom in when i edit uh make sure that it comes out nice first and that all the water's out of the tip. There we go. And so here we go. So I just give it a little squeeze and I don't even get really close. Like I don't try and get super close to the edge because the Plainsman 340, uh, is just looks nice on its own and I don't have to worry about that as long as I have enough coverage that you get the idea like that okay and this is exactly how you ice sugar cookies So for narrow bits like that little bit there, I either will leave it or I just ease up on my pressure and use the paint that is just on the tip of the nozzle. And here, I'm not even going to worry about it. That's just too tiny and I'm not going to waste time by switching nozzles to get that wee little area. Okay, so this is also snow on the roof and let's sit down to here there we go and the other one that is snow is over the doorway there we go and that's that for the snow so then what I do is, now normally I'd have like 10 of these and, and just do all the old lace first. Or I've got all different kinds of ornaments and I do all the old lace on all the ornaments that, you know, require it. So I'll take this off, put this little cap back on, and then I will have a bowl of water with an empty bottle, suck up some water and clean that out right away. And really, let me just switch my, there, like that. And if you find that there's anything left in there, they do provide a little brush, but really that's all it requires for me. Okay. 
And then if I am going to switch to a different nozzle, then I'll just leave this in this little bowl of water, but I'm not switching. We're gonna go on to hot tamale. Hot tamale. Put that on. And I'm always surprised, like it just twists on there and it doesn't leak at all. There we go. So this is the candy cane on the side of the house. Uh, oh shoot, see, I forgot. Those are gonna be old lace. Yeah, it's okay. Doesn't take much to go back, but it's just such a time waster. Um, it is November right now, and I am freaking out. Okay, anything else red? No. All right. So take that off. Put your cap back on. You know the one that I hucked over here and I can't find? And I found it. <laughs> take my bottle. So I'll suck up some water and shoot it in the nozzle part and then I'll suck up more and stick it right in there. And okay, so where's that little, just so I can show you. They do send these, I use something different, but they do send these cause it's like, these are too, these are too big. These are for the bottle as far as I'm concerned. All right, and they don't really send you one for the nozzle, but I don't know if any of you got these, this with your pottery kits, but it works like a charm. I like that, if you ever need one. I'll try and find a link for that, but. Okay, so what am I gonna do? Yeah, go back to old lace. Ah. So you see it comes out, a little bit of water comes out first. You don't want that. All right. And you saw how fast I did that? So it goes pretty quick to switch the nozzles up as long as you don't let your paint, your stroke and coat solidify in there. Okay, Audrey. Yes, that's it. So you can see that the, it's just this switching back and forth the nozzles or like cleaning out the nozzle. You don't want to be doing that more than you have to. So you're going to for sure uh, have these all lined up. Okay, so the house this time I'm going to make sea breeze. Generally I use sea breeze or sour apple, but of course it doesn't matter what you use. There we go. And put this down here so you can see it. Okay, so here's a situation where I'm just going to use, oops, I got one on there. Yeah, it all happens when you're on camera, it doesn't matter. Um, to get a line like this, if I really want it, I'm not squeezing. I'm just using the paint that's on the end of the nozzle for that. All right. Easing up on my nozzle, on my bottle. There we go. Okay, so, and if I stay a little ways away from the edge, then I don't run that risk of it. Oh, what am I doing? Sorry. <laughs> I don't run the risk of it uh, running into the groove. Although if it runs into the groove, 
let it dry and scrape it out. It's no problem because you have a bone dry piece here. All right. You should just leave them there actually. All right, cafe au lait for the door. So I was pretty stoked when I found this little candy house on Etsy and I will leave the link. Uh, I can't remember the name of the Etsy seller at the moment, but you know, you'll see it in the link and um, gosh, it's cute. I've actually bought a few ornaments, 3D, uh, 3D cookie cutters off of Etsy for ornaments and you know with the, the cost of them and the shipping yeah they can be kind of pricey that's for sure but I maybe make okay which one am I doing now salsa salsa I can make, uh, sell maybe three of these ornaments and, um, and I've made it back. No problem. So that's worth it to me. And because I can make it back like that and it just makes me feel good that I'm supporting an Etsy seller. All right. This is Salsa. Test over here. Something going wrong. Don't keep it hovered over your piece. You have a blowout or something. All right. So if you've seen my uh, kiln openings and you've seen all the ornaments, <laughs> this happens when you're filming, of course. Oh my gosh, totally smeared into the paint bottle. Ah, whatever. Okay, um, that's a beautiful thing because it's bone dry. You just let it dry and then you can scrape it off. I mean, it's great that way. Gray hair is what I have for the little smoke here. And normally I don't keep moving it because I'm showing you that I keep moving it. Normally I just do my testing on the side of the board. So what do you guys make for ornaments? You've probably seen on my tutorials that I've made, um, like a lot of these cookie cutters, but, um, well, not tutorials. I've never done this in a tutorial, but uh, the angel ornament. So I'm using Butter Me Up now. The angel ornaments. Do I have any other ornament? I'm not sure. Remember now. Okay. 
Oh, <laughs> add this color and another one. Can you believe it? So I have a little window, just little bobbles on top. See why you want to have them all lined up? Because <laughs> it's just tedious changing this for one little window. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have any other ornaments that I can think of. And the doorknob. But what do you guys make? I mean, I've seen some of you on tutorials, but some of you don't have a channel, so I haven't seen it. And in here, I just flood it. There. Okay. So it's done. And um, this will completely dry. If I want to fix this little thing that I made here, then I can just scrape it off with a needle and... Um, and put more hot tamale back on there. Um, and I single fire these. So uh, generally I put them into my slow cool program firing, um, but they are single fired, which makes them go faster. And I love that. And because they're on a nice looking clay, you know, I don't, I can uh, lay them right on the kiln shelf, which is really awesome. Um, what else do I need to say? Yeah, and I'll just put like a a string. I can leave a link for that string too. I got it off of Amazon. It came in three um, different colors in the package. So there's jute, a kind of a beige color, and uh, a black color, which is really nice too, like for my trains and so on. Okay, so I hope you found that useful um, and that you'll make some. Uh, like I said, I left all the links in the description for you. To... So thank you, Diana, for asking me to do that. I felt that I should get it done fairly quickly because now's the time to be making uh, ornaments and Christmas things. Uh, most of craft fairs happen in November so uh, i'm so stinking busy and you know yeah you see that calendar back there i thought that was gonna help me this year but somehow i am just still so busy <laughs> for november and i'm freaking out anyway that's okay anyway like and subscribe to my channel it helps my channel and hit the little notification bell to see my next uploads um and i appreciate that very much and i guess we'll see you next time peace out <laughs>